and welcome to another episode of the Mining Conversation with Miss Teddy. This is the Mining in um, edition and right now I am joined by Ralph Hennige and he's from BME. He's going to tell us more about BME, what they do in the mining industry, how the mining industry is moving and what he thinks of the mining industry uh, of South Africa as a whole. Welcome to the Podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, before we start, can you kind of just tell me what BME is and what it does and everything? Yes, certainly. BME is a, is, is, is a business unit so that belongs to Omnia, Om, the Omnia Group. Okay. Omnia Group is a listed company on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And the Omnia Group basically has three business units. It has uh, fertilizer and it has a business unit, explosives and industrial chemicals. Yeah. BME is the unit, uh, the mining unit, uh, business unit for, for the Omnia Group and we do offer two solutions to the mining industry. We produce explosives, um, we trade chemicals, we offer a blasting solution to the mining industry and we offer um, mineral liberation stroke metallurgy solutions at the plant uh, for the mining industry as well. Currently BME operates in 26 countries, uh, predominantly uh, or historically a, a South African company, but over the years and over the decades, we are 40 years old this year, um, we have diversified into the rest of the SADC region, into West Africa, and over the last seven to eight years, we've established ourselves as a company also in Australia, Indonesia, and Canada specifically. Wonderful. So with your company, what are the um, challenges that you've noted in the mining industry? And I want you to compare them to other African uh, countries as well. So can you note the challenges and then compare them to what other challenges you've seen have, um, facing or faced by other African countries? Yes, certainly. I think I think the challenges are really regional, regionally dependent. Yeah. Uh, so one of our strategies is to to diversify uh, from one region to the next to the next uh, in many aspects. Yeah. From a mineral commodity perspective, from a, a currency perspective, even from weather and climate perspective, okay. infrastructure risks, uh, government legislations, um, and 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 so forth. We do see challenges specifically in South Africa that have or are being addressed currently in infrastructure. We all know um, the transnet issues that in pockets are getting better and are improving, but there's still a long way to go. Um, we, we, we see um, um, diversification in commodities as a challenge. You know, coal is a little bit under pressure commodity prices are going up and down mm -hmm. so we make sure that through regions we diversify ourselves from a commodity perspective we focus very much on in South Africa on, on various commodities iron ore platinum gold and so forth but also still coal because coal is an industry that um, we, we cannot ignore yeah. it's, it still generates the energy in South Africa and so forth, and, and we cannot let South Africa down from that perspective. So it's, it's a, we support that region. Now, if we move into other regions globally, every region has got their own uh, uh, piece of challenges. West Africa's uh, socio-political challenges, closed borders, a uh, bit of security issues, but still a, a market for gold and, 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 and future iron ore. In SADAC, we all know the copper belts, the battery mineral, minerals, the critical minerals that, that are attracting the mining industry into yeah. that region. But yes, they also, the Central African countries have got very different challenges that they, that, that, that they deal with. So as we um, um, grow as a company, we try and diversify as much as possible in order to be able to deal with all the challenges that, that we are facing today. Mm -hmm. Inherently, I think that uh, I see it from the mining in Daba this year specifically, I see a big uptick in, in, in energy. Yeah. I think the, the mining industry is, is still one of those industries um, that, that the world cannot do without, um, especially the critical minerals that you know, uh, feeds urbanization and so forth. 
Um, and it is, it is clear from this con conference that there are many opportunities, there are many growth aspects. I think also this conference is one where a lot of risks and challenges are addressed. And some of those risks and challenges cannot be addressed by only us, or only by the miners, or only by the governments. I think collectively we need to all work together to address those challenges. So I'm very, very positive about uh, the mining sector in general at this point of time. And um, what does uh, BME contribute to the sustainability of the mining industry in South Africa? Oh, that is the first thing that we recognize is that we do not operate in a bubble. We operate in an ecosystem. Yeah. We are aware that all the miners have got their specific ESG targets that they need to follow, 20, 30, 40, 50. And we as service providers and solution providers to the mining industry need to bring our part in order to contribute. We also need to recognize that we need to hold our own service providers, transporters, raw material providers and so forth accountable too, so that we close that whole ecosystem. Now BME and Omnia Group really has many, many silos of sustainability that we're currently working at or in. The one is renewable. We've got plants where that are automated, we've got plants that uh, are solar fed, we generate our own steam at our Sasselberg plant in South Africa that generates energy. And so from a renewable energy perspective, we do contribute to the mining industry. The next silo is, is circular economy. Mm -hmm. It is closing the loop on, on waste production, reuse the waste, reverse osmosis, uh, recycle the water. We as BME are known to collect all waste oil, used oil, 25 to 30 million liters per annum um, and work that product into our, in our, into our explosives formulations and then we blast that away. Now put that in context, one liter of used oil, waste oil can contaminate a million liters of pure water. So, and we collect 25 to 30 million liters of waste oil. So that is an environmental aspect. But for me, the biggest, the biggest impact that we can make as, as an explosives company and chemical company specifically is make sure that the mines are blasting optimally. Okay. What that means is if the blasting goes well in the mining cycle, it has a direct impact on the loading of the, of the rock, the hauling of the rock and the, the plant throughput of the rock. Mm -hmm. And if, it's, if hauling and loading and plant throughput is done more efficiently, that is where the big decarbon uh, aspects um, for, for, the for the industry lies. Yeah. And then there's the, the last aspect maybe that I would like to allude to is the big buzzword at the conference now is AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I think we should take a step back. I think AI is a wonderful aspiration um, to, 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 to work towards, but I think we need to take a step back and look at the basics. First, we need to look at data. We need to look at data collection, data storage, data mining, organizing ourselves with data, build trends, analysis, predictabilities in blasting, in, in whatever we do. And then AI can sit on top of that and help us automate all this data movement and so forth. So I think we're not quite there yet from an AI perspective, but we're certain, certainly aspiring to to, to, to being part of that process. So digitization at this point is very, very important. Yeah, okay. And then what do you then think, because you did also mention uh, the laws and regulations. So I want you to understand, what do you think of the government's role, uh, or the role played by the government within the mining industry? Because with NGOs or other um, social movement, they will tell you that, Yes, we do have great laws, but when it comes to them being implemented, then it just goes the other way, and you find that the most pe the most people who are affected by that would be the communities, especially the ones who are within the mining industry. So, what do you think of the role that is played by the government? The I think the I think the government is spot on. I, I think the government is trying its best to to. Maybe not reinforce, but, but more um, state and communicate that there are essential practices, specifically in the ESG space, that need to take place. 
uh, and, and everyone needs to contribute. Again, it is not government on its own, it's not the miners on their own, it is together finding the solutions. What we see in our space, every, every mine today has got um, inclusive procurement programs, has community upliftment programs, has uh, um, building, building um, uh, companies that, couldn't, that, that, that can't be built on, on, on their own. And we, it is our obligation to help those companies, those communities and so forth to be uplifted. There are specific targets that are set, um, and they are set in my mind for the right reasons, and we all need to comply to those reasons. And then the third aspect of ESG, of course, is the governance of everything. Everything needs to be governed, there needs to be processes, there needs to be no misappropriation of funds, the funds need to flow in the right direction, and everyone you know, can aspire towards the same targets. Um, I've got absolutely no, no uh, concern um, in what the governments, in the governments in which we operate are trying to achieve. It's all for, for, for the right reasons. Wonderful. So another question that I want to ask is the role of young people. So now we know uh, with the metric results that came out, university uh, issued or there were uh, articles on newspapers where they were saying that they worried about the math and science um, students. You know, uh, it seems like we do not have enough young people who are taking up math and science. So I want to know what do you think, um, what do you think should happen uh, or what can mining companies do to help uh, young people who want to get into the mining industry or encourage young people to come into the mining industry? Yes, I think I think that the mining industry, but not, not yeah, the mining industry as a whole, that, that means the miners, the service providers like ourselves and the next uh, service providers that, 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 that we uh, uh, deal with as well, need to recognize that there's a lot more to be done, firstly. And where we can intervene as, as an industry is, is really um, already at the educational space and at the qualification space, get involved with those, with, with, with those uh, students and, 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 and institutions, student and educational institutions, sponsor a little bit more, but also make visible to the audience, and that is the scholars themselves, that there is a very interesting and impactful and dynamic industry out there like mining. And for mining you need uh, you know, uh, certain qualifications too. Yeah. We as a company, for instance, take on a lot of um, um, uh, graduates. We've got our stringent graduate programs, um, and, and we sponsor those graduates and take them to the next level of education and the next level of education. Now some of those graduates fall, fall aside, they feel they're now in the wrong industry and others just thrive, yeah. you know. And what I think is what we can do as an industry is maybe, is maybe expand that sphere of graduates that we embrace and take into the industry to expose them to the various dynamics of the industry and then, you know, with that we will help more and more students. Yeah. So that in itself will have a massive impact um, on, on, on mining. I have to say as well that there is currently, inherently since COVID, but maybe even before that, a little bit of a brain drain or skills drain in the mining industry, but it's not a South African phenomenon, it's not an African phenomenon, it's a global phenomenon. I think um, they are, or, or the youth today think there's, there are sexier industries than mining, mm -hmm. and but I think we can make the mining industry very, very attractive again, because I still believe it is a very attractive industry if you support properly, if you qualify people properly, and uh, there's many, many opportunities in the mining industry to to, to, to thrive in. So I, I think we need to do more and more and more to support students and scholars in, in our time today. Wonderful. And just your overall comment on the mining endeavor 2025. I think How it's has a, your experience been like? I think it's a super event. Um, I, I want to say um, I was in the US two weeks ago um, and at, at, a, at a similar conference but a little bit different and all the people that I met at, in the US conference, or a, a big chunk of them, are actually here too. So 
the mining in Laba is not only important for South Africa or for Cape Town, it's in, it has become and established itself as a global show. There are many, many global players here now from a mining perspective but also from a service provision perspective and we should really be proud of that. As I said uh, a few minutes ago, I think compared to last year and since COVID, the mining in Daba has grown from strength to strength. The participation has been unbelievable this year. The um, collaboration and the collaborative intent of the mining industry between various players has been magic. Um, so I really see good energy and, 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 and dynamic uh, in this year's mining in Daba specifically. Share regarding industry, people want to come into the industry, people want to invest, the government, community, the whole. Just what are your thoughts about the South African mining industry? The South African mining industry has, has its challenges, we know that, but I'm also very positive that most of those challenges are, are being addressed, maybe not at the pace that, that they should, but there is movement in, 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 in that aspect. I think not only uh, in South Africa, but also in Africa. I think, uh, uh, as I said, the mining industry is, 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 is coming back a little bit uh, compared to other industries and is being perceived in, in, on a global basis as a very, very critical industry uh, to excel in. And the governments, various stakeholders, governments, investors, miners, suppliers, and so forth, all got a space to play in the industry to make this even more magical and even more dynamic. Um, I've been in the mining industry for 30 years, 35 years now. I am as optimistic as, as, as I was a long time ago that this is a, a great and exciting industry to, to, to work in. But we all need to work together to, to make it a, a success. Wonderful. Well, Good. thank you so much for joining and it's chatting. <laughs> I enjoyed our chat. Good. It was nice. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Wonderful. And that was it. Thank you so much and bye. Thank you. Okay.